every now and then when you see something in scripture it kind of reaches out and grabs you and makes you think about it now one particular line that grabs me is this one here then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers oh you think about guys that do torturing in this world and you start to think what are the guys like in the next world i don't want to meet those guys and how bad do you have to be for Jesus to hand you over to the torturers? Not a happy moment. So Jesus is really letting us know this forgiveness thing is important. And this is a very powerful commentary on part of the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So just in case we were thinking that wasn't really important, you might want to read today's gospel, especially the part about being handed over to the torturers. So let's take a look at this from a couple angles. So Jesus himself practices what he preaches when he's on the cross after being tortured and you know mocked and spit in his face and the crown of thorns. What does he say? Huh. Where do I get you guys later? I'm going to hand you over to the torturers. No, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Because when you look in the beginning, you see in this story, it says here, um, the guy couldn't pay back what he owed. It says he owed a huge amount. That's the first guy. That's us. Because of our sins, we owe a huge amount. There's no way we can pay it back because we're finite human beings. And we have sinned against an infinite God. That's the whole reason for the incarnation. Because man committed the sin, man must do the atonement, and man is unable to do the atonement because he's finite. But when God becomes a man in Jesus Christ and suffers on the cross, his sufferings are of infinite value. And then we receive the benefit of them. When we unite ourselves to Christ through faith, through baptism, through Holy Communion, through a life of prayer and obedience, we become one with the Lord, and then we get the benefits of his infinite merits on the cross, and that is what saves us. So, we look here and we see the Master, which is God, has compassion on the servant, but then the servant goes after his fellow servants. And the guy even falls on his knees and begs, be patient, I'll pay you back, but he refused. So we see that he doesn't pass on the forgiveness, doesn't pass on the love of God through his heart to his neighbor. Now, a couple of things to talk about. For one thing, there are bad things that our neighbor does to us, and then there are really bad things. I don't know... I mean, I've got plenty of people that have done plenty of bad things to me, but I don't know if it gets to the point of really super evil or heinous. But some people have had some very evil things done to them. And so that's a much more difficult forgiveness involved, but we are called to do it. Now, a couple of things on this forgiveness thing. We need to remember that although we are called to forgive, that's only part of the equation. Okay, So I can forgive someone who sinned against me, but they still need to ask God for forgiveness. Because what does Jesus say? Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. So there is a connection with us and Jesus. When people do things to us, they're doing it to Christ. And when we do stuff to other people, we're doing it to Christ. So we're going to have to ask for forgiveness ourselves. But there's another part of the equation here in Romans 12. It says, do not repay evil for evil. If possible on your part, live at peace with all. Beloved, do not look for revenge, but leave it for the wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. So if your enemy is hungry, feed him if thirsty, give him something to drink. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. So in other words, even if we let them off the hook, there's still the question of, is God going to let them off the hook? And are they even going to be sorry? So, 
Jesus forgave his enemies without them being sorrowful. In fact, he forgave them in the act of sinning against him. The Pharisees were down there mocking him. And he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's how powerful the love of the sacred heart of Jesus is. That's how incredibly humble he is and, and devoid of pride. You know, it's hard for us. We have pride. So when people hurt us, boy, we want to make them pay. You know, plenty of movies about vengeance out there. So, so that's another part of it. Now, my thing when I think about this, the people that have hurt me, I don't want them to suffer anything. But I think if they did hurt me, they should know what they did if they're not already aware. By the same token, I want to be aware. I'm aware to some degree of people I may have hurt here and there in my life. But there's probably quite a few things that I have done along the way that have hurt people that I'm not even aware of. And I'm sure God's going to let me know. You know, we, we will have an expanded capacity in our consciousness and understanding. So we're, you know, we might have a little trouble thinking about too many things at once. But when we go before the Lord, he's going to show us our whole life, all the good, all the evil, and we will be able to look at it all in one glance. Our capacity our brain capacity will be increased significantly. Um, and so, as we look at this, you know, my, my thing again is for them to, to, to have that awareness. So I'm not, I'm not seeking pain for anyone. I just think that they should be aware, I should be aware as well. Another thing is, when someone is hurting you, forgiveness doesn't involve allowing yourself to continuously be a victim. You have the ability to defend yourself on a physical level if you're attacked and even on an emotional verbal level. So if people are mocking you, you can stand up. It doesn't mean you curse them back or mock them, but you can stand up to them verbally and defend yourself. You know, and a lot of times I get these questions so many times about family members, you know. Suppose you've grown older and your mother or father or brother or sister are kind of not so nice to you. And you're thinking, well, they're family, I should stay in contact with them. <laughs> not if they're so mean that it's affecting your life and you're feeling really bad, you can't pray, you just, you know, they, they won't listen. No need, God doesn't expect us to be a doormat. He doesn't expect us to get walked all over and beat up on all the time. You know, we can, we can defend ourselves and stand up for ourselves. Doesn't mean that we seek revenge. Defense is different from revenge. So um, it's important for us, like I said, to remember that even when we forgive someone, you're worried about you know, justice or whatever, I think it's a good incentive, especially for people that have been hurt really bad by someone, even when you forgive them, they still have to get the forgiveness from God. It's the second part of the equation, because we're all in it together. We are with God, we are with our neighbor. And so we're all together. So justice needs to be served completely down to the last penny, to quote the scriptures, in this world or the next. Now, if you look above uh, the bad thief, you see the sword of Michael the archangel coming down in, in, in pain and judgment ready to come because he's rejected the mercy of Christ and the forgiveness. He's the servant that's not seeking forgiveness, not granting forgiveness. He's hardened his heart. But you see above him also, Michael the Archangel is holding the scales of justice, which are out of balance. Now the other guy, here's uh, the Archangel Gabriel, he's blown the trumpet because heaven rejoices over one repentant sinner. So Saint Dismas, the good thief, has sought forgiveness from Jesus. And he even rebukes the bad thief. He says, have you no fear of God? We are under the same sentence, you know? And this man has done nothing. So. He defends the innocence of Christ against the bad thief who's attacking Jesus. So Jesus doesn't even have to defend himself. He has the good thief there, St. Dismas, coming to his defense. And then he says, remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus gives us that one of the most beautiful lines in scripture. Today you'll be with me in paradise. So that's what we hope to hear.
Let's remember we are in the business of forgiveness because we're in the same business of God. And on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And when we pray the Lord's Prayer every day, we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us.